Satoshi Kon was a legendary anime director, of course giving us iconic and classic films like Perfect Blue, along with leading the charge on one of my favorite anime series of all time, Paranoia Agent. Paprika is very reminiscent of the themes he tends to throw into his work, that fine line between real and imaginary, between being of sound mind and losing one's composure. He always seems to like taking a look at what's really going on within a character's head and showcases their current mind state based on how the animation changes, how the shots are set up, and how the scenes are executed. A lot of times focusing on one character's point of view, so whatever messed up psychological troubles they got going on, we are just along for the ride, and the more confused they are about what they are perceiving is exactly how the audience is meant to feel as well. Paprika is unfortunately his last film that was ever released before he passed away, coming out in 2006 and centering around the idea of dreams. In a way, a bittersweet finale for his work considering everything he made up until this point had a very similar concept, but this one directly focuses on the warped, incoherent, and confusing way that dreams feel and what they can reveal to us about ourselves. There's a lot of good movies out there that are about dreams, waking life, inception, hell, even the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. But I think Paprika is the one that does the best at capturing how dreams feel, that trippy nature of it, how we are in one location and all of a sudden we are in another with no explanation and yet it feels normal and congruent. And as wacky and out of control as dreams can be, they are also extremely telling about what's going on within our subconscious, the things that we are trying to run from, the things that we want to discover, rediscover, and of course, all of our nightmarish fears. As you can imagine, Paprika is a difficult film to break down and talk about, just with the subject matter of dreams, the interpretations of them, and often how the film merges dreams with reality. I'll get into it as much as I can without real spoilers, but what I find extremely impressive is that even with all of that, if you just focus on each character individually, they all have specific arcs that are kind of easier to follow than you would think. I guess it's just kind of like understanding a person will help you understand their dreams, and vice versa. In the movie, a company has created a device called the DC Mini, which essentially can record your dreams and allow you to watch them back. It starts being used in order to help psychiatric patients, but once one goes missing, it could spell danger because not only can you revisit dreams, but multiple devices together can actually merge dreams. At any time, someone's mind can be entered, their dreams can be exploited, and their sanity moments away from breaking down as it gets nearly impossible to discern what is real and what is not. Paprika is a whimsical girl and the alter ego of one of the scientists as she traverses the dreamscapes and tries to help and solve the mystery of the stolen device, and at the same time is extremely influential at guiding several characters through their own issues and traumas. But as the dreams become more overbearing and the division between them grows thinner, everything gets increasingly more dangerous showcasing some of the wildest and smoothest looking animations and transitions that I have ever seen. Every scene, every shot, the cinematography, the colors of the world, the colors of the dream, the transitions from the real to the dream world, it's all done with such incredible planning and symbolism, and it's nearly impossible to catch everything upon the first watch. But it doesn't just rely on the high concept spectacle alone because it has several deeply rich and memorable characters throughout it. Detective Kanagawa is being helped by Paprika as he has a recurring dream of entering a hallway, seeing a dead body, and the killer is in the distance. But each time he tries to run and catch the killer, the hallway wiggles from under his feet, he falls, and he wakes up in a fright. He also grows frequently bitter and angry whenever movies are brought up, and yet his dreams show him transferring from genre to genre within the world of film. It's interesting too since Satoshi Kon is such an expressive filmmaker and it's almost very self-aware in the sense that Kanakawa can only think to represent his struggles in movie tropes, a detective story, a desire to save the girl, and as his history is unveiled and the things that he is hiding within himself that he can't bear to face show up, all circles back to why movies make him uncomfortable, why he's struggling to see himself as the hero, and plays into the beautiful and calming ending scene 
that calls back to the catalog of Cone himself, and in a sad way, the final shots of this movie feel like a send-off to the many stories and worlds that Cone had ventured into throughout his work, the same way that we venture through many different areas of our dreams. And yet, there's always that next dream, that next movie that we want to see. The character of Tokita is also extremely unique in this film. He's obviously obese and doesn't seem to take care of himself very much, and yet he is the inventor of the DC Mini device and he's extremely intelligent. He's thrown all of his passion and creativity into his work, but it's caused him to not work on himself so much. He has the imagination of a child and the intellect of a genius, and yet he still has anxious insecurities surrounding him, and a lot of that I think is with how out of place he feels where he is at this stage in his life. There's also a romantic connection between him and Etsuko, another doctor on the team that early on in the film seems like it might be one-sided, but turns out to be much more on both sides than you would traditionally see within these type of characters. I think that it also helps play into the dream aesthetic as in, this is a movie where we are supposed to look beyond the surface level. Dreams can and do show us who we really are if we are willing to pay attention to them. And I think Takito as a character kind of represents that. Everything in this movie ramps up as it goes along, the pace never feels boring, and the final 30 minutes is just astonishing. Not just with the beautiful animation, but also that it's combined reality and fiction so deeply at that point that it's almost impossible to tell apart, but instead you just kind of go along for the ride, and that's kind of the point. Within a dream, things feel real. You don't question the strangeness of it, you just accept and embrace it. Paprika as a film does the same thing to you as an audience member. Most of the movie is figuring out what is a dream and what isn't, but by the end, you realize that it doesn't matter. The journey of these characters is being told on both planes of existence, so the more that you get to know them, the more you go through both and see their journeys coalesce into one solid thing. Seeing the majesty of this movie, embracing its insanity, with witnessing some of Cone's most passionate and well-executed work, I can't help but get sad and emotional during that final scene. Like I said, there's no way that he would have known that this was going to be his final film. In fact, he began working on another one before passing away, but having that next movie, the one the detective goes to see called Dreaming Kids, just feels like a poetic send-off to a mastermind's work of creativity and adventure. Rest in peace, Satoshi Kon. You were one of a kind. And if you guys out there have not seen Paprika, do yourself a favor and give it a watch. Before I end this video, I also want to throw out a shout out to one of my Patreon supporters and their manga, The Shonen Beat. The Shonen Beat is a manga series that utilizes music as its primary power system. I've talked about this series before on my channel a couple of times. It's got all the adventure, action, and humor that is inspired by other Shonen series as well as some Senen like Berserk. Also, Adam has his own YouTube channel now that I highly recommend you guys subscribe to. He's doing analysis videos on not only Berserk, but also One Piece. I know I haven't gotten into One Piece yet, but it's such a huge huge fan base out there that I would hate for these analysis videos to go without being seen, so definitely check out Adam's channel, give him your subscription, tell him Ryan sent you, and also all the links to the Shonen Beat that you will be able to read will be down below for free, so go ahead and check it out. Other than that guys, thank you a lot for watching this video, I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you think about Paprika down below in the comments. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.